Alright, what's up guys? Um, this is take two. Um, first video was alright, but uh, I got a little excited and talked a little too quick and uh, just wasn't happy with it. So, um, as I mentioned in my previous video, um, I've got a project going to uh, make a, a uh, an e-cig powered from a wall outlet from uh, 110 volts AC or 120 volts AC. I will refer to it to as both. Um, so just deal with it. It's all the same. I know there's a difference in 10 volts, um, but it's funny if you look at different manufacturers, um, they'll label, label their products 110, 115, 120 volt, um, US standard wall receptacle voltage, 110 single phase voltage. So. How am I going to do that, you ask? Um, <clears throat> I told you guys to guess in the previous video, and uh, I probably just haven't waited long enough for anybody to uh, comment. A couple of you have, and uh, one of you even mentioned using uh, PSU's computer power supply units. And uh, I actually have a setup. Um, this is too weak to use for any kind of legitimate vaping use. Um, this is actually designed to slave multiple PSUs together. Um, they all have to be the same. These are specific for this unit. Um, I pulled them out of a server. Um, the best I can do is uh, just under 100 watts at 12 volts and right at 200 watts at 5 volts with both PSUs. Um, now this is going to make an amazing 5 volt and 12 volt power supply unit for my work table. Um, probably use the 12 volt for small lighting up underneath the shelf. Um, the 5 volt will definitely go to a, a, a substantial uh, a USB bank. But um, I have yet to see anyone vape using AC, actual alternating current. Um, pulse to DC is not the same thing. <clears throat> so, I'm going to do it. As you can see here, I said in the previous video I was going to use number 2 gauge. Um, I decided to go with number 6 instead after doing some uh, researching and some looking into it. Um, this will produce closer to 12 volts, which is what I'm hoping for. I'm aiming for 1200 watts max. Um, I've got a very large potentiometer that I intend to use to regulate the voltage. However, it will not be in the circuit with this wire. Um, in order to regulate the current that this would have with AC, I would need m way too much. Uh, it would need a much larger control circuit, which I'm not going to jack with. So, I've got this little beauty right here. This is a microwave oven transformer. I've had this for a while. It actually came out of a 1500 watt microwave. Um, and as it is set up right now, with the primary taking the 110, um, the secondary will produce almost 2000 volts, which is crazy. And with it set up properly and with the proper safety gear, um, you can pull some pretty, pretty impressive arcs off the case of this since the uh, secondary is grounded to the case. So. I'm going to do uh, similar to anyone who's built a spot welder out of one of these. I'm going to remove the secondary coil and I'm going to replace it with some number six gauge. I'll probably get probably about five turns in it is what I'm guessing. We'll just have to see how it goes. I'm going to put as much in it as I can to start with. I want to get as much saturation into my large secondary coil as possible.
but the goal is to have 110 volt AC input from the wall outlet through my potentiometer and it is a potential is basically just a big variable resistor um, it's rated uh, 600 volts or 10 amps um, I believe it's rated on the high end of the voltage at 300 watts so we'll just have to see what it can handle if it can handle 300 watts that's more than sufficient now mind you that is only that is 110 volts AC the secondary coil is not connected to this coil except through um, oh, what do they call it electromagnetic coupling I believe is the proper term and there may be a better technical term but the 110 volts AC will induce voltage into the secondary coil. Um, it will be a much lower voltage. I'm aiming for uh, 12 volts at 100 amps. If I can get that, I'll be happy. Anywhere near 100 amps and I'll be happy. Um, if I'm pulling a full 1200 watts out of this, 100 amps at 12 volts, um, this is all guessing at this point because I don't know for a fact that that's what I'm going to pull out of this. But if that's what this is doing, I'm only going to be putting at 120 volts, 10 amps through this coil, which is uh, perfectly fine for short term. Considering this was designed to run at 1500 watts, I'm not concerned about this coil. The potentiometer or rheostat, um, variable resistor, whatever the heck you want to call it. It's basically, it's a potentiometer. Um, it'll be the weak point. Now, obviously, if I just plugged this into the wall and had everything hooked up, had this hooked up to an e-cig, um, any e-cig design that is out there right now would fry because it's designed to run DC voltage. Um, I'm not going to get a mechanical switch or even a relay that's going to be able to hold 100 amps that's going to fit in my hand. So this will be basically just a closed circuit on the e-cig. The wire will come straight out and connect directly to the e-cig. Um, I'm probably going to make an RDA specifically for it. But um, all of the power control will be done through the 110 side, through the primary coil. I'll be regulating the voltage to that through the potentiometer, and I will also have uh, a 110 relay, 110 volt relay, that will turn the coil on and off. And I'll just have a small push button on the uh, handheld section. So that's the plan. Um, 12 volts at 100 amps is substantial. Now, using a potentiometer, I can turn that down basically, should be able to turn it all the way down to zero volts, which means that I would have full power regulation of, I would have full voltage regulation of it. Um, with that being said, the entire purpose of this is not actually to build a powerful e-cig. I've always wanted to try to vape using AC. I, I'm really curious if it has any effect on uh, coil performance, on uh, I'm, I'm curious if it's going to have any difference in how the coil heats. You know, I mean, I know a lot of times on these they'll heat, well basically all the time, they heat from the outside in. Um, it'll probably be the same, but I'm curious if the coils are going to behave differently on the AC. Um, I'm curious if it's going to have any kind of uh, harmonics in the coil, if it's going to cause it to uh, hum or sing any, um, get the ringing out of it like you do with the really old lights. Um, we'll just have to wait and see. From a safety standpoint, um, this is a fully closed circuit which means that um, there's no way to disconnect this side, the secondary side, from the e-cig. It's going to... I said it's going to run straight out. There's going to be lugs coming off the secondary, and I will attach the lugs to the cable running to the e-cig. But it's going to be a closed circuit. 
the all of the controls will be done through the primary as I've said the relay will turn the primary coil on so I will be it's not a low power setup because it's going to be running close to uh, at absolute maximum um, probably close to 1500 watts if I put a coil on it capable of doing that um, there's absolutely no need for that I don't intend to run it past about three or four hundred watts but if something were to happen say the primary coil short circuits if it fails in some way um, all that's going to happen is the secondary will lose power um, it's not going to shock me um, the odds of overloading the secondary coil are very low. Um, if something's going to fail, it's going to be um, either the primary coil, ooh, excuse me, or one of the components driving the primary coil. <clears throat> I am very excited to try this. All I have left at this point is to find a 110 volt relay that can handle the power. I'd really like to find like a 15 amp. Um, something else, I don't know if you can see it. Right here. These right here. This switch right here controls this receptacle. Now I have multiple fuses. These are uh, fast acting, I believe these are actually resetting fuses as well. Um, this is a, well see this is even rated at 125 volts. This is very old. But I've got three others. I've got a 10 amp and two 15 amp fuses. So not only will I have the uh, safety that I'll be building into this, it will also be running through a fuse. So if anything's going to happen, it'll blow the fuse and uh, prevent any further electronics going ballistic. Let's reset this. So that's the plan. Um, I'm sure a lot of people are going to freak out because I'm going to be using 120 volts AC to power it. Um, however, all of the houses, I mean that's, that's household voltage. Um, I could use 230 volt, but this is not designed to run on 230 volts so it's kind of pointless. And I would have to run extra 230 volt. I only have that running for a couple appliances in the house. There's no need to uh, go through all that trouble. Um, and I don't need the extra power that comes along with that. Um, there is the potential to uh, run a, uh, what is it, uh, a full bridge rectifier to convert it to true DC voltage, um, but getting rectifiers that can handle the current necessary to run it at the full power is, uh, that would be a very large rectifier board in itself, and that's just a lot of efficiency loss. There's no need for it. And I mean, I really wanna see what it's gonna vape like with AC. Also, um, I believe it is uh, 24 volts AC is considered safe to uh, handle live by uh, OSHA. So, I mean, it's, it's well within safety ranges. Also, because this will be capable of, my goal is 100 amps. Um, if it exceeds that, it'll probably be too low a voltage for me to really be able to use properly anyways. Um, my goal is 100 amps at 12 volts. If I can get anywhere near that, I have this plasma arc torch. 
This is made to run off of a uh, an arc welder, a stick welder, an AC stick welder at that. Um, and they recommend that you run this at uh, around 100 amps, 100 amps max. So this just uses uh, two copper plated carbon rods and uh, when you rotate the thumb screws it closes them together and uh, produces an arc and can be used in place of uh, an oxyacetylene torch. Um, this thing is awesome. I've got to find a couple of uh, rods for it, but that would make me needing a torch far less important because I could turn this way down till I get just a real fine arc and use it for uh, brazing brass, real thin sheet metal, whatever I want. So that would be a secondary use for it and uh, another reason for having lugs coming off the end of the secondary so that I could connect this in place of the e-cig. But that's the plan. Um, let me know what you guys think. Do you think I'm just batshit crazy? Or uh, do you think it'd be something worth actually uh, doing? I'm going to do it either way, no matter what you guys think. From a safety standpoint, um, this is probably a safer setup than uh, any e-cig you're going to get. Any battery-powered device because I've got fuse right here and I'll probably start with the 10 amp fuse and if it doesn't blow that I won't change it. I'll have the 10 amp fuse here, I've got the 15 amp fuse in the breaker panel, um, I've got my secondary coil which is where all of the power I'm going to be using is coming from. Um, I do not want more than 12 volts. If I get more than 12 volts I'll probably do something to, I mean obviously I'll be able to regulate that below that with the potentiometer. Um, from a safety standpoint, this is actually probably going to be safer than this. And this intrinsically is fairly safe already. The only dangerous part in it is the lipo, and I've never had an issue with that. If you treat them properly, you're not going to have an issue. Of course, uh... There's always the chance something can fail. There's always the chance something can go wrong. But I'm doing everything in my power to make this as safe as I possibly can. And I will build some sort of housing to contain all of this. And um, this will be electrically grounded. I'm, I'm not going to leave it ungrounded. I'm going to do everything I can to make this as safe as I possibly can. I have been shocked by uh, 110 a few times. I've been bit by it, and uh, I didn't enjoy it, so I don't intend on doing that again. Anyways, let me know what you guys think, and vape on.